thank you, thank you. So my name is Jan Jungboom. As Jet said, I'm living in Amsterdam. I'm working in Norway. I'm, I'm traveling to Asia all the time. I mean, I, I feel right at home here with all these nomads that also travel the world. It's beautiful. So Telenor is a uh, telecom that pays me to work on Mozilla stuff. And half my time I'm currently dedicating on the Firefox OS project. And I'm working on keyboard and stuff like that. Now the thing is, you guys are all like the creme de la creme of JavaScript. You guys know everything about Firefox OS. So today we're going to do something way, way, way more fun. First thing that I need to say is that I'm also writing a book about Firefox OS. My editor asked me to do that. And when I first signed the book deal, I designed my own cover because I didn't have it ready. <laughs> for some reason, I didn't go for this at Manning. <laughs> So now it looks like this. So if you're interested in doing Firefox OS development, or you want to know everything about like, how you can make cool mobile web applications that look pretty and stuff like that, go here on my Twitter. There's like a discount code and all that stuff. Now, as half the presenters here at JSConf, I'm going to start with a confession. Because the moment that I um, sent in my talk proposal, I did not own a screwdriver. I mean, this is the worst, worst way to get started on a hardware talk. So two, so two weeks ago, I basically had everything up and running, but all, all my demos were still basically a mobile phone. So I had to dissect this. Um, I think the result is wonderful. And a lesson learned here is that if I can do this without ever owning a screwdriver, then you guys can do it too. You guys can build cool stuff with the things you learned today in this presentation. And my, my timer is not running. Um, now, the maker movement is, at the moment, everywhere. I, I was in Malaysia, and, and some random guy walks up to me and says, hey, Jan, we got like this great maker space where you can like hack on stuff. Please come down here and go fiddle with us. I'm like, that's so cool. We're actually building stuff that like augments the world around us right now. And the reason that we can do that is because these new li nice little development boards, for example, the Tessel that we saw yesterday in Nerd Disco, they're here. They're very cheap microcontrollers. Computers have become so fast that they can be very tiny and do all kinds of cool stuff. The second thing is that you can attach phone sensors to this. This whole explosion of smartphones makes that having sensors that control your accelerometer or gravity or, or small cameras have become very, very cheap. You can attach them. Now, this all has a downside because this is how an average Raspberry Pi or Arduino board looks like. And for me, as a software guy, this is way, way, way too complicated. You know, I, I can't stick. I can't stick things in, in like little, uh, you know? And on top of that, like some of this hardware that you can attach to your Raspberry Pi is very expensive. Why do I have to pay 35 euros for a TFT screen for Raspberry Pi while I can get a full Firefox OS phone for 25, including battery chips, everything? So I figured, hey, one and one is two. So. I, I took one of my phones, a Geek's Phone Peak, a developer preview device um, that basically has Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, 3G. It even has two cameras. It's a little bit more expensive than 25 euros, but not that much. And I figured if I can abuse that to do my Internet of Things things, then I don't need to solder anything. I don't need to connect any external things. And it's way cheaper than a full-on set. And on top of this, it runs Firefox OS. You might think, wh why is that cool? Well, Firefox OS basically works like this. I got a phone. I got a Linux kernel. Then I have Gecko, the render engine that powers Mozilla Firefox, on top of that. And then HTML5 UI. That means that every piece of UI on the phone needs to go through Gecko. That means that every API that does cool phone shit is included in Gecko. So if I strip off the HTML5 UI, then I got like a phone, super cheap phone, with JavaScript bindings to everything. This is perfect for hackers. So Oh, awesome. This is, what you <laughs> this is what you get if you search for awesome kids on Google. <laughs> um, OK, so basically, this is how you start. You take a Firefox OS phone. Then you'll unscrew it. 
Then you use your newly acquired screwdriver to crack it open. And then you'll end up with this. And this is a very tiny print board that controls everything on your phone. I, I got one here. You can't even see it from the back. It's this tiny. This contains all your sensors. It contains two cameras, SIM card slot, everything, everything, everything. That's amazing. Very small. So we got a SIM card reader, SD card reader here, um, the, the screen connector, one camera, there's also one in the front, flashlights, and touchscreen connector. These are all things. It's just click and it's just plug and play. Don't need screen, just disconnect the screen. And I also found out something that the camera is very easily detached because it fell out. <laughs> <laughs> but then I found something wonderful because these cameras have a standard connector. And you can just go to China and buy a better camera for your phone. And the only problem is basically that it doesn't fit in your print board. But as we're not needing it to fit in a phone anyway, we can just buy a new camera and like attach that. It's blew my mind, yes. <laughs> um, then there's at the bottom of the phone, there's also something. And this is connected to the screen. And I don't know what it is. I, I ripped it apart, and it still worked, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, you end up with this. You got a print board. Um, the, the thing at the right, or at the left for you, at the left is um, it does like radio communication. It's like an antenna uh, extension that you plug into the print board. So if you want to do something with data over 3G or you want to make phone calls, then connect that. And you'll end up with a casing. And the casing has a touch screen and a normal screen. And I figured I, I, want, I, I want those to separate as well. Now the thing is, at cheap smartphones, these things are glued together. And I tried a screwdriver to unglue these. <laughs> so first it broke, <laughs> then it cracked. <laughs> and then I figured I can just like only detach the touch screen. And this is the touch screen connector. So I used my screwdriver again. And that didn't work out that well either. <laughs> um, so the demos that you're going to see today do not involve a screen. <laughs> um, so then we got this little print board, but then Wi-Fi does not work. And, and that really puzzled me. So I figured that, like the radio chip had something to do with it or anything. And then I saw these connectors at the, at the back cover of your phone. And these, these look like paper with like a little copper plating. And this little thing, if you attach it to your phone with a little tape, you'll actually go from zero Wi-Fi networks in your range to like 12 here. This is like, I've, I'm still puzzled how this works. I'm, st I'm still a software guy here. But you know, this is like real, real tape for your hardware solutions. And it's freaking small. It's three quarters of, of a credit card. Uh, in, all, in all fairness, I, I first put the credit card next to, to the thing. And, and only five minutes before my talk, I realized you could all see my credit card number. <laughs> Um, so what we now have is like the little board. We got Gecko running on top of that, and now we can build something cool on top of that. You know? So I call this because I'm, I don't have a problem with anything or something. Yarn OS. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See an official logo. Um, Yarn OS is an alternative to Firefox OS. <laughs> Um, you can run it on any rooted Firefox OS phone that you just buy in the store. And it's especially made to run on this chipboard. So no screen, there's no touchscreen input, there's no UI, there's nothing. Basically gives you a JavaScript console, and you can program anything you want with that. Um, some batteries are included, so we'll auto-connect to 3G networks if you put a SIM card in, and APN detection, and stuff like that. Um, and I made another mistake. So I, I, broke, I broke the casing of my phone while I was trying to fiddle with uh, touchscreen. And that means that every time I have to boot it, you need a battery. So I have to press the print port and the battery together, and then like with one hand do this, and then go to my computer and type the flash command, and then do enter. And that's the only way I can upgrade the thing. So please keep your back cover intact, because that everything fits together nicely. It makes it a lot easier to flash. Um, now, YanOS is very easy. It, it's, an, it's an HTML file. 
we, we have Gecko, and we just render one HTML file, and, it, and that has JavaScript, and you can do device stuff with that. Easy peasy. Now, the cool thing is that you can also de uh, connect the Firefox developer tools to this phone. So if you want a JavaScript debugger of your stuff, then use the, use the normal Firefox de debugger. That's really powerful. I'm going to show you that in a second. Um, and there's a bunch of things you can now do with this little print board. For example, make a security camera. Like, just take a photo every five seconds, then see if something really changed. If so, make a photo, send it to me over, over MMS or over email. Maybe if something really shaky is going on, you can actually call, because you can put a SIM card in it. It's amazing stuff. Plus, my little print board even has four gigabytes of storage already included. <laughs> so if you want to do that, seven lines of code. It's, it's just say, camera, take picture, front. It's a promise. It resolves. You get a blob. Then you get a reference to the picture storage that can be on the SD card or on the internal storage, depending what you have in the phone. And then say storage ad named, ta-da, done. Easy. Another one, a doorbell. You know, like, I bought a wireless doorbell recently. It was more expensive than the phone. And it's not wireless at all. I still have to push a button in front of my door at, at my doorpost. So I figured if, if we use the phone, then we can do it really wireless because the phone has a proximity sensor. So you can like wave my doorpost, <laughs> and then it will play over Bluetooth in my living room. I mean, this is like, <laughs> this is cool. And plus it has a front camera next to the proximity sensor. You can even like include a video stream. This little board is cheaper than any of those doorbells with video screens that you can ever buy. Um, also doing this is eight lines. I can connect to any Bluetooth audio device. I just have to have the ID of it. And then when, and then on user proximity, if the user is near, if the user is within 10 or 15 centimeters of the proximity sensor, then play a sound and it will automatically play over Bluetooth instead of over the built-in speakers. Um, Last example that I have, this is, my, uh, this is me and my, friend, and my group of friends. And um, in the middle, you see a pretty rad boy with a cigarette. His name is Brian. And Brian has a very annoying tendency. He gets lost a lot. He may, he may, we were in Warsaw, and, and Brian didn't find the apartment back at 5 AM, so he slept on a little bench on a square up until the police came. And he had to be friends with a bum, because the bum knew like a telecom shop where he could charge his phone, but because his phone is also always dead. So I figured, the Brian tracker. <laughs> um, I can take the board, solder a battery to it, have a 2G connection because of the SIM card, and whenever Brian is lost, I can send a push notification over 2G. It will tell me the geolocation, and ta-da! <laughs> This co and, and here's the cool thing, because a, um, a screen is basically eating most of your battery time. So this solution will run about two weeks on the default battery without even charging it. That's, that's pretty amazing. You can like build actual useful stuff with this little board. Um, and that brings me to the next thing. <laughs> Let's uh, do some demos. This was me at the after party yesterday, by the way. <laughs> um, so we have, what I have here is one of the boards that I removed from uh, one of the phones. And now I can connect to this. And now I have a, let me zoom in. And now I basically have a JavaScript console that I can talk to and do device things with. For example, if I want to read the device motion, because this thing also has the accelerometer in it, for example, I now get like the horizontal uh, acceleration, including gravity. And here's cool, if I turn it around, it gets into the minus. <laughs> Um, okay, so that's pretty cool. Now, now I found a new problem. 
Um, if you do something on this board that draws too much power, like connecting to Wi-Fi, um, and you don't have a battery attached, then it will just shut down. Um, <laughs> I think if you hotwire like two of the wires, then, then you can probably solve that. But um, you've all seen what happened when I tried to deconnect the screen. Uh, so <laughs> I don't trust myself like soldering stuff, actually. So for that, I have a second thing. Um, it's in the casing, so I can hold the battery with it. And it also has a SIM card, and I'm going to connect this now. So, oppa. There we go. So we can connect here as well. We're a little too big. OK. Um, so there's a SIM card in here. And as you can see, it detects that the SIM card is there and automatically enables data for me over 3G or 2G. I think this is a very powerful feature because you can, and it almost is no, it does not eat any data unless you tell it to. So you can just buy a prepaid SIM card. Well, you can't really buy it in Germany because you need to like live here and like have an address and, and give up your mom and your first birthrights to get a SIM card as I've experienced. But with my Dutch SIM card, it actually works. And for example, I can now do simple XHR calls. OK, so that works. Um, for example, we have the security cam feature. So let me demonstrate that. So I can tell it to read the back camera and do it every five seconds, or three seconds. Oh. And now, just hold it like this. And we'll take a photo every three seconds. OK, so that's three photos. And now I can stop it again. And now it's saved it to the internal storage. And because there's basically Linux running on this thing, I can, it's basically uh, based on the Android kernel. I can do ADB pool stuff out of the cart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did not promise the images would be sharp, so you can't get me on that. <laughs> um, the other demo. Um, what I brought today, and I, so the sound people put this like here very carefully. So Bluetooth speaker. And now I'm going to talk to Bluetooth. So I have to get one on and then. Start doorbell. Start it again. So it founds the thing and now it goes automatically pair. And now when I hover over the proximity sensor, it will start playing doorbell. Oh, it's a bit, a bit soft. <laughs> and I remove it. Stops. <laughs> okay. Um, it also has Wi-Fi built in, and now I hope that my tape holds, <laughs> because I, I want to do tracking and stuff, and for that you need a Wi-Fi connection, um, or it makes it better if you do it indoors. So enable Wi-Fi. Um, so it tries to attempt to connect to JS fast. I hope that's going to work. My mom always told me to never do any. No, that did not work. Uh, my mom always told me to never do any live demos. But here we go. Actually, Wi-Fi is now connected to JS fast. So we only need an IP address. Here we are. So now we have a Wi-Fi connection. It's cool. Disable this. And now I can um, start my tracker. So let's say that um, I'm Brian, and at this moment I am lost. Okay. Um, this is the Brian tracker. At this moment, there is no registration yet, but if I tell tracker.start, it will register at the push server that Mozilla has. And now we're here. The only problem is that we don't have any location from Brian yet. And so all we need to do is, in this case, check request new location. 
Now, the phone, in a couple of seconds, will receive a push message. And based on that, uh, it's going to like, use the geolocation API to find out where we are at this moment and then communicate that back. So we got a push message. We order grant permissions because permissions are for suckers, you know? <laughs> I mean, this is my device, I can do anything. <laughs> and we send our location. And now, a couple seconds later, okay, so I found out you guys all use Google Maps static maps. So we're, we're blocked here. <laughs> but when I click on it, we get redirected to Google Maps and we find out where we are. And now I'm going to go back to my slide. <laughs> now, there's so much more that you can do with this setup. If you, because there's a flashlight on this thing. Um, I mean, two cameras. You can like walk around and like make photos on this side and on this side. Um, but the only way to really experience this, and this is what I've seen, like like so much is get hacking, you know? Buy a rootable Firefox West phone. If you're here in Germany, then the ZTE OpenSea that you see on the left is your best bet. You can get it for 60 euros on eBay. Crack it open, flash my Yano S thing on it, and, and just write your own scripts. You, know? you, you are in charge. You can build Internet of Things things, even if you're not a hardware nerd. And I think that's, that's freaking amazing. And with that, I want to thank you all for being here. And hopefully see you next year. Yes.